section of about 42 or 43. Again, I want to re-emphasize that the principal challenge remains the pace. We need to accelerate the pace at which the process is moving. It is moving extraordinarily uh, slowly and that again has to do with the unnecessary exercises that are being embarked upon in the recount process. I resolutely maintain that the recount process is primarily a recount of the votes counted, the votes that were cast. The recount is a recount of those votes cast by the electorate. But what we find is that a tremendous amount of time is being expended in matters that are not connected to the recount itself, but concerning the examination of other materials in the box. For example, a tremendous amount of time is being spent trying to reconcile and call out the lists of uh, voters that are found in the boxes. What is being uncovered is that in the box supposed to have the list of electors ticked off by the presiding officer. What we are finding is apparently the presiding officer collecting from the various polling agents their list as well. Those lists were supposed to be the polling agents list that the polling agents would mark off simultaneous with the presiding officer as the voting would have taken place on elections day. And what we are finding is that in the boxes now, there are three and four lists. And a great amount of time is being expended in terms of determining which list is the presiding officer's list and which list should be followed because the lists are not reconciling. Some are marked differently, etc., etc. And these are side frills and side shows that are detracting from the main event and the main event re remains the recounting of the votes cast and these are the things and there are big arguments all the time about these extraneous and um, inconsequential matters and they are consuming valuable time we are hoping today the commission had a long meeting because we keep raising these matters and hopefully a few decisions were made and hopefully they are going to be implemented and um, it will lead to uh, increased alacrity in the process. One of the other fundamental deficiencies in the process is the fact that that list of issues and the resolution have not yet been prepared by GCOM. This is a list that I've been arguing for from day one. I met the chairperson myself. She pointed me to her secretary typing this elusive document. Up to now, the document cannot be produced. A set of decisions have been made today which are required to be implemented or injected into that document because that document ought to have dealt with issues and solutions dealt with on day one and day two. Day three produced different issues. So we need a constantly, a constantly updated list of issues and their resolutions. And as the days go by, more and more will arise. But we, we can't seem to get GCOM to, to, to get this, this simple thing done. I have taken on my own to prepare what I understand to be the list and the, the list of issues and the solutions which GCOM has recommended. And I am going to take it to the chairperson shortly, hopefully, and ask her to you know, adopt it or dispute it. So at least we have something in writing which we can distribute to you and to other stakeholders in the process so that you understand what the rules are because we can't keep going on making up rules or uh, not applying uh, rules that we have agreed to. And those are some of the challenges that we continue to face. 
the tabulation exercise has commenced. Hopefully, it concludes all the number numbers of boxes that have been counted today. When I left just now, I got an update from the tabulation center. They had completed 10 regional and 10 um, national boxes, uh, the tabulation exercise. Another important challenge also that seemed to be gaining some momentum is the ongoing commentary of distortion that is taking place in the social media by persons who are not here. And that is causing a tremendous amount of disquiet and, 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 and heightening of tensions and animosity among the population because you have persons who are deliberately distorting the issues. Persons who are nowhere in the precincts of this convention center. But they are, I don't know who are feeding them this and what is their agenda. But clearly, it is an agenda that will not augur well for the process. It's an agenda that will, if it succeeds, it will derail the process. And there are a few people who are constantly, dedicatedly executing such a campaign on Facebook. If you read it, whole day you see four or five issues that are magnified, multiplied, distorted, and causing all sorts of um, uh, 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 mischief. We are considering activating uh, the provisions of the Cyber Crime Act. You know, we have passed an act, and that act applies to this kind of mischief. We, 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 our legal team is considering activating the provisions of the act, making report to the police, and launching an investigation, and if possible, write Facebook in relation to this matter. Because it, if it goes on in this way, it's not it's going to end up, you know, in a, in, 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 not in a good way. And the other issue that I want to continue to reiterate is this constant attempt to undermine the integrity of the elections itself and the electoral, the, the national recount. As I said to you this morning, AP and new AFC claim that they have won the elections, yet they are spending an enormous amount of time and energy in the workstations trying to find flaws and find alleged irregularities and in relation to what occurred on elections day. The elections, whether we like it or not, were certified as free and fair by all the international observer teams. The government took credit for it. Now you find a denouncing and a condemning of the very elections that they said themselves, as I quoted to you, the president this morning, when he gave his address to the nation just a few days ago, he said that the elections were free and fair and regular and that the controversies arose after. We all know that. The controversies arose as a result of Claremont Mingo attempt, attempt at fraud in relation to the Region 4 results. That were what, what, what the controversy related to. But now, obviously, they, because the, the results are, 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 are the, the recount is moving smoothly, they, they, they are trying to undermine the integrity. I am pleased to report that of the number of boxes that have been counted, today we will conclude a hundred and over a hundred. I am pleased to say that the SOPs that have, are in the possession of the PPP have again, each one of them, have been vindicated by the recount. The numbers are almost identical to the statements of poll that the PPP has in its possession. So the recount in that regard is going smoothly, but of course, multiple attempts are being made to undermine it. Mr. Nadal, besides the comments you made this morning about the excessive objections being raised, are there any other aspects of this process for which you can make recommendations to improve the pace? Yes. If we do not engage in activities that are unrelated to the recount of the ballots, then this exercise can, can, can increase, the speed of it can increase significantly. If we don't spend time on folio, spend time on who died and which voter migrated, how can you stand up in the workstation and make an allegation that a particular person migrated and you have not a shred of evidence to suggest that, that that person was not in Guyana on elections day? And you don't have a, not a single scintilla of evidence is being produced. Then another person will stand up. 
this person here, serial number so and so, was dead on election day. That person was not alive on election day and therefore could not have voted. And they don't have a, not a scintilla of evidence to suggest these wild, reckless allegations. What these allegations succeed in doing is consuming valuable time. And GCOM continues to entertain them. I asked the, the, the chairperson today in a conversation that I had the privilege to have with her that you cannot allow your own electoral process that you presided over to be undermined within your own precincts. How is she responding to that? She took note of what I was saying and she said that she will address it. All these issues that attack the elections that Justice Claudette Singh held are an attack on GCOM and, 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 and the whole machinery. Mr. Angelal, you spoke to several lists to be in um, some of the ballot boxes. Can you List of electors, electors yes. yes. Can you speak to which region is this predominant? It's not, pre it's, it's, um, I can't say which region, but it happens on, in almost all the regions. So when you got your information in all the regions? I, I think they happen in more than one region. I didn't single out, I don't, I didn't see, I didn't observe rather, uh, uh, a particular concentration of them in a particular region. But um, it, it seemed to be an issue that recurred because um, presiding officers uh, re requested from the polling agents their, their list, their copy of, of the list, and they put that in the box as well. But I don't think it's a region issue. I think it's just that people not understanding what their roles and obligations were on election day. Mr. Nandalal, if, if, if it is that evidence is presented of people dead or, or having not been in the country, how does that affect the process, if that, evidence is presented? That cannot affect the process because we are dealing with a recount of the ballots cast. That is what we are dealing with. A recount of the ballots that were, that were cast and counted by the presiding officer on elections night. How those ballots got there and whether they were rightly placed there are matters for an election petition. Is that, it can't be a matter to be resolved here. You have to apply vast principles of law. You have to forensically uh, go through a process permitted by law before you make those types of uh, determination in terms of admissibility of evidence and a whole host of things that the process is not capable of embarking upon and the persons who are in charge of the process are not qualified to undertake that type of forensic exercise. Those are matters for an election petition by a court of law qualified to deal with those issues. What we are engaged in here is a very mechanical exercise of counting the ballots that, were, that are in the ballot box. That is what we are, and, and compare it with the statements of poll possibly, which up to now Mr. Lowenfield can produce. Mr. Manuel, earlier you spoke about the statement of recount matching the PPP statement of poll. Not the PPP statements of poll. The statements of poll that were given to PPP polling agent by the presiding officer at the end of poll on elections day. Okay, uh, but PPP would have posted those statements of poll yes. on a website. Yes. But we know say that recently that there were changes to that particular uh, whatever the documents that were uploaded. And uh, we have evidence to suggest that there were changes. I think the day after the recount well, commenced. I, I personally don't have that kind of information. I, I don't have that kind of information. And if you have it, I will um, ask you to, to put it out there. What we are currently doing though, what we are currently doing as I speak, is to put each of the statement of recount alongside its equivalent statement of poll, and we are going to put it out on Facebook. We are doing that exercise right now. So we are going to put it through everything that I'm saying here. You will see it visually displayed on Facebook page of the PVP and the several of the PVP leaders. That this is box number one, region number one. This is the statement of poll in the PVP's possession. This is the statement of recount produced by the recount exercise. Signed, all signed on by the PVP representatives, PNC representatives, and all the political parties.
So we are going to do that shortly. You just maintain for us that the timelines that we're working with have been exacerbated because of the audit. If you were to do a separation of the time that it takes to count versus the time it takes to answer queries, how much, is it, how much time is it taking for the station that you're at to actually just count the ballots? 30 minutes. 30 minutes the ballots is a fair time for the counting of ballots. And how, much, how, All, many, how many, how many No, 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 just the counting of the ballots. It will take 30 minutes. you referencing, how many ballots would it oppose? One, one ballot box had 90, 90 something ballots and it took three hours, just over three hours. And it all, most, 90% of the time was expended on arguing about not the recounting of the ballots, but every other thing in relation to the, 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 the process. And those side shows, that's what I want to call them. Those side shows are detracting from the main event. The main event is a national recount exercise. Recount of what? Recount of the ballots. And that is the central activity. Everything else is incidental and consequential or inconsequential. And I am saying to you that an average of 30 to 45 minutes is a fair and conservative time that will conclude the counting of ballots in relation to the, uh, the, the exercise. Regardless of the number of ballots in it, I'm giving you an average, an average of 100 ballots, for example, in a box. And that's a fair account across the board. Thank you very much, Mr.